effects should one be aware of in attempting uh, to uh, uh, put a thiocyanate rich diet into their lives? What, what should people know about as far as uh, toxicity and those kinds of things? Well, virtually, the, there should be no toxicity as long as it's dietary. Mm -hmm. um, the limiting factors, of course, would be the volume of food one could eat. Um, when you talk about cyanate in general, um, we're look, if you take it in a very, very concentrated form in enough an amount, it becomes what we call metabolic poison. However, in the food sources that have been eaten for 250,000 years in Western Africa, there have been no side effects from that particular diet whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And um, in fact, uh, Dr. Agbai has developed a derivative of the African yam, which delivers about 500 milligrams of the thiocyanate per daily dose. And according to Dr. Agbe, that is about one half the amount that is eaten by the average African, which would be approximately a thousand milligrams. Okay. Uh, looking at uh, some of the foods uh, that we're talking about when we talk about uh, thiocyanate, you mentioned folic acid, uh, um, iodine. Uh, protein. Can, can you tell us, in your opinion, how important those things are to a thiocyanate rich diet? Yes. Um, first of all, you know, one has to look at the whole uh, dietary pattern of the person. And all the needs of the person have to be answered, including protein, potassium, um, and for sickle cell, thiocyanate, and folic acid. Now, if we look at the foods that contain thiocyanate, those foods are usually tubers such as the African yam or the cassava. Uh, there are also protein foods such as the beans, including lentils and alfalfa sprouts. And um, um, so one can derive adequate protein when mixing certain types of uh, vegetable foods such as or brown rice or millet. Millet is another food high in thiocyanate. Millet is high in protein in and of itself and one ate enough um, beans such as lentil beans during sometime during the same day they ate the millet and they would get adequate or complete protein. Um, in African dishes, meats are used um, to a, a more moderate extent than they are used in the American dietary system. Um, in the African diet, the, the basis of that diet, as it is in most indigenous people's diets, is the whole grain, such as the African yam. Um, so one can get quite adequate protein um, and potassium and all the nutrients by eating a high thiocyanate diet. Now, you mentioned iodine. It has been found that thiocyanate uh, should be taken in a diet that is rich in iodine as well. What other medical problems may be relieved uh, by a thiocyanate-rich diet? Well, the, diet, the things that contain thiocyanate are very advantageous to consume because of their high fiber content and their gracious um, nutritional um, enrichment. Um, these foods, again, include the African yam, the cassava, the apricots, buckwheat, millet, um, alfalfa, greens, uh, many foods of which the African American population already eats. Um, the other diseases that may be uh, affected by this diet include cancer. Uh, no research that I know of has directly proved that, but when you look at the lower rates of cancer, I mean, uh, you're talking about a 400% lower rate of cancer in, Af in the same African society versus the African American society, um, one must pay attention to that. Also, if the foods are not overly salted, high blood pressure would definitely be um, beneficially affected because of the high fiber content, the high calcium, as well as the high potassium content. In fact, it has been said that African yam is anti-sickling, anti-cancer, and also has a pro-ovulatory um, effect. Okay. All right.
besides uh, CSI Nate treatment, what other lifestyle factors should uh, be uh, considered in order for a patient to get his sickle cell under control? One very important factor is positive attitude. Of course, everything isn't always in the mind, but it is important to have a positive, forthright attitude about it. Um, to eliminate as much as much uh, procrastination and inertia as possible, to have adequate amounts of hydration. It is important to keep the blood thin with um, drinking enough water, um, to keep proper bowel habits up. A lot of the medicines that are used for sickle cell cause constipation, mm -hmm. so one must include enough dietary fiber. Also, one must stay away from sugar because it is indeed a poison and it also sucks the fluid from the body. Stay away from over abundance of salt and stay away from alcohol because it also dehydrates the body as well. Uh, you have talked with us on two or three occasions about our effort to put together a cookbook and a TV uh, series on cooking for control of sickle cell. Uh, how helpful do you see this effort that I'm doing and uh, what would you suggest uh, recommend as far as improving uh, what we've been doing so far? Well, I'm very pleased with the fact that uh, we are taking a look at our own patterns of eating and lifestyle um, that were indigenous to our population in Africa before we were deculturalated. In other words, before our culture was taken away from us. Um, because of the slavery um, circuit. Um, I think that the diseases that we're suffering from are in a great abundance compared with that uh, uh, sub-Sahara Africa and Africa in general before the onset of uh, slavery. I think it can be expanded into other diseases such as hypertension, cancer, uh, prostate cancer, prostatitis, um, just a whole abundance of the chronic metabolic diseases. Uh, any closing remarks uh, that you would have as far as uh, treating uh, your patients, uh, people who uh, have family members with sickle cell, what, what would you want them to know about how to handle that and how to manage it and where to go find help and those kinds of things? I would think that <coughs> The parents should instill into their children the burning desire for knowledge that they can use against their disease. Knowledge and then the wisdom, meaning the use of knowledge, are the two most important tools. Now that's, of course, very ph philosophical, but in practicality, one can go to libraries, the Sickle Cell Foundation, to various clinics. There's hematologists in the city that also treat sickle cell. Um, there are health food stores with uh, libraries of books that one can do their own research. Okay. Uh, we want to uh, thank you for uh, sharing your time with us. And uh, you know we had a deal, don't you? And what's that deal? Remind me. Uh, Alex? We had a thing. You got to sing. Uh, you don't remember that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what are we singing? Okay. This is the theme song from my show, Cooking Man Show. If you just follow along with me, we'll, we'll handle this real nicely. Okay. Who can cook some chicken? The cooking man can make you chop and shout. Who can cook a bean bag? The cooking man can. <laughs> Mess right in your mouth. The cooking man can. Cause he cooks with love and care. He makes the food taste good. The cooking man makes everything he makes. Quality and delicious, delicious. And if you ever had a spoonful of more, you will say it is delicious, nutritious, delicious. Nutritious. Everybody, this is Dr. William Richardson, the Atlanta Clinic of Preventive Medicine. I'm Chef Daoud Rashid Ujama. I am the Cooking Man, and this is the Cooking Man Show. And this is uh, another segment of our series, Back to Our Roots, Cooking for Control of Sickle Cell Anemia.